Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to use iTunes. I'm going to be teaching you the general steps to help you know what you're doing. And by general, I mean we're going to start from the very beginning. I'm going to help you download and install iTunes. Also import and buy music from three different sources, from your hard drive, from a CD, and also buying music from the iTunes store. After that, I'm going to teach you how to organize your music, how to connect your iPod to your computer, how to sync your music to your iPod, and lastly, how to eject your iPod from your computer safely. Now this is an interactive tutorial. It's going to go from step one all the way through step six, but if there are any steps that you already know how to do, just click on the red arrow at the bottom of the screen and that's going to skip the step you're currently on to the very next step. Let's do this. Step one, how to download and install iTunes. Okay, so you just need to get on the internet and type in apple.com. Once you go to apple.com, there's a gray bar at the top with a section labeled iTunes. Click on that one. And in the iTunes page, there's a blue button at the very top. Click on it. It says download iTunes. It's going to take you to a new page with another blue button on it that says download now. Click on that button. And then it's going to pull up the download right here in the bottom of your screen. Once it's all the way downloaded, click on the tab at the bottom of the screen. And it's going to start opening it up for you. Once this pops up, click on Install iTunes. It's going to take you through a series of steps. I'm going to go quickly through it and just keep hitting Continue. You're welcome to stop and read it. I'm going to get to the point where it says Install. and I'm going to click on Install. You need to type in your password. Okay, and when this pops up, it means you are ready to go. I'm going to close all these windows. And once you get your iTunes downloaded and installed, it's just going to be right here on your tab. It's the blue circle with the music note in it. Double click on that, and it opens up iTunes for you. Step two, which is importing music onto your iTunes, has three sections. Importing music from your hard drive, from a CD, and buying music from the iTunes store. Now if you already know how to do all of these, then go ahead and skip this step by clicking on the red arrow at the bottom. It'll take you to step three. If you don't know how to do these, then click on the green arrows, starting with the one at the top. It'll show you how to import music from your hard drive, and then it'll bring you right back here where you can click on the green arrows of the other two, or you can pick and choose whichever one. Once you're done learning what you need to learn from step two, then click on the red arrow at the very bottom, and it'll take you to step three. Okay, so what if you have a song or two that are saved onto your computer and you want to get them on your iPod? To do that, you have to get the music saved onto iTunes first, and then we can put it on the iPod after that. And it's really easy. There's two ways to do it. The first way is that if it's saved onto your desktop like this song is, you click and drag it into your iTunes just like that. There's going to be a little green plus sign right there, and you just let go, and it's going to drop right into your playlist. That works not only for just one song, but also folders of songs. That's one way to do it. Another way is if it's not saved onto your desktop, you click on File, Add to Library, and it's going to have all your sections right here. Click on Music, and you've got songs saved here. You can click on one song that you really like, open, and it'll add it right into your playlist. Easy as that, and that'll do it for you. To get songs off of a CD, you first have to change your settings a little bit. So go up here to the iTunes tab. If you're using a Windows computer, then it's not going to be the iTunes tab, it's going to be the Edit tab. But if you're using a Mac, click on iTunes, slide down to Preferences, click that, and this is going to pop up here. You need to go down to Import Settings, and you can either change it to AAC Encoder or MP3 Encoder. AAC Encoder has high sound quality and smaller f file size. The MP3 also has high sound output. It also has better compatibility with lots of devices. The only problem is it's got larger file size. So if you're looking for a smaller file size, go with this one. Hit OK and OK again. And now you're ready to insert the CD. So go ahead and do that. Once the CD is inserted, it's going to pop up right here at the top, and also this pop-up might come up. Click whichever one it is. It's going to ask you if you can import it. Say yes. 
and then it's going to import that music right here onto your iTunes. If there are some songs on your CD that you would like not to put into your iTunes, there are little check boxes here. If you uncheck the box, then it'll just skip right over and it won't import it into your iTunes, but that's up to you. Also, if you have a burned CD that you're importing, these names, the names of the artist and the names of the songs may not come up, so you'll have to insert them manually by either right-clicking or double-clicking on the name and the artist, and then you can type it in once it's done importing into your iTunes. Okay, once your songs are all imported, you can come up here to this tab where that CD that you just imported is going to be at the very bottom. It's got a little eject button right here. Click on it and then your CD will inject from your computer and all the songs that you just imported will be here in your songs tab. And that's how you import music from CDs. Buying music from the iTunes Store is really simple. The first thing you need to do is just click up here on iTunes Store. It'll take you to the home page. At the top of the home page there's a bar with some general tabs on it. If you're looking for specifically podcasts then you can search through that. Or if you have something more specific in mind like a certain song or artist you can come up here to the search bar and type it in. Let's say you're in the mood for some Queen. Type it in, hit enter and the search results will pop up with individual songs and albums. Now if you see a song that you might be interested in but you haven't really heard it before, if you hover over the song a little play button will show up on the left hand side. If you click that it'll play the song for you so you can decide if you like it or not. If you decide that you like the song then you can hit the price bar right here, click on it, it'll ask you if you're sure you want to buy it, it might ask you for your credit card information and also your Apple ID password. Now mine, it didn't ask for it because I already have those things entered in. Now if you want to find it after you've already bought the song, click library. It's going to immediately go to the purchased section and your song that you just bought is going to be down at the end of that purchased section. And that's how you buy things from the iTunes store. Here we are at step three, how to organize your music in iTunes. Before we organize your music, I want to show you that iTunes has kind of organized it a little bit already. Up here at the top, we have a few sections. First, we have the iTunes radio, and then iTunes has organized all of your songs. They put all of it in the song section, but then they've also organized them into albums, artists, genres, and playlists. Now, a playlist is a certain set of songs that you put together for specific reasons. Let's say you want to work out. So you want a really pump up playlist. Come down to this corner and press the plus button and hit new playlist. And on the right side it'll have it right here so you can rename it. Let's call it workout playlist. And then you can pull over any sort of song that really pumps you up or whatever works best for you. I'm just going to move a couple over. And once you're done hit the blue done button and it'll show up on the left hand side of your screen as the workout playlist right here. That way when you plug in your iPod and you want to download just workout songs, they're already organized for you and you can put it all together in one thing. If you are downloading an audiobook, I highly suggest you put it in a playlist so that it doesn't get mixed in with your music. And I also wanted to show you this feature down here. New Smart Playlist where you can give specifics about what songs you're looking for and your songs will basically sort themselves. You can put it by artist or beats per minute or genre or whatever works best for you and you can even be more specific here. And then you would hit OK and it would put itself in its own Smart Playlist. And those are the ways that you can organize your music so that it's simplest to get on your iPod. And welcome to step four, which is how to connect your iPod to your computer. Okay, so how to connect your iPod correctly to your computer is in the packet there was a USB cord that's about three inches long. You connect your iPod to that and then connect the USB part straight into your computer. This is what it should look like. Now that is the charging cord. Do not connect it to the headphones cord or any sort of extension cord because then the charge won't pass all the way to the iPod. So this will come up when you put it in, hit continue, agree to the terms and hit continue again. And then now you can get started syncing. Hit get started 
and this is your summary page. This is the best way to tell if your iPod is charged and this also has all of the information about your iPod. This little section right here is going to be the best way you can tell that your iPod is charged. It needs to be connected to that 3 inch cable right to your computer and your computer cannot be in sleep mode otherwise it won't get charged so make sure your computer is open it is not in sleep mode and it's connected to that 3 inch cord and no other extension cords to that once this is all the way filled then you know it's charged it usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half to charge and then there's also some interesting things down here this is the way you can enable voiceover is on this summary page so just keep that in mind if you would like voiceover on your iPod and that is the general information about hooking up your iPod to your computer correctly just make sure it's connected to that 3 inch cable and make sure you watch this to see how much it's been charged now to step 5 which is how to sync your music to your iPod device to sync music to your iPod, you're going to go up here to the Music tab. Come over here and click Sync Music. And here it has a section where you can either do the entire music library, so all the songs in one lump, or you can do selected playlists or artists. So let's put that workout playlist onto our iPod so now we have it on there. Go down to the bottom, hit Sync, and up here it's going to say it's complete and you can eject your iPod. And at last, we are at step 6, which is how to correctly disconnect your iPod from your computer. Now that it's all synced and complete and you're ready to eject your iPod, go over here to the title of your iPod. Right next to it has a little eject button. Hit that and it's going to revert back to your library and that means it's ready to be taken out. So go ahead and take it out and you are good to go. And thanks so much for watching and enjoy your music.